And once again, I am Isabella Tugume. We are streaming live on air through the parish development model has gone missing and unaccounted for. What is surprising is the district officials who failed to account for this money walked away scot-free. Kanem Gume has more. Opman Modo was seen as the magic bullet to propel Ugandans out of poverty. And that the program, in spite of its good intentions, was going to be a cash cow for the corrupt. These fears have come to pass. Investigations have since revealed that million shows. The audits have revealed that almost half a billion shillings has gone unaccounted for. Koboko District Local Government has not accounted for PDM funds of Walisa District Local Government, 12 million shillings. Agago District Local Government, 56 close to half a billion shillings. Kitugum, with the biggest unaccounted for funds, is an interesting case. At least 14 technical and support staff squandered. In the initial stages of PDM, money was being sent to the district. District officials then decided which circles would get money and how much. But they also saw this as an opportunity to selfishly enrich themselves. The problem came in because of different guidelines. You find the Ministry of Gender, people got confused. As this money ends up in the pockets of the corrupt, Ugandans suffering to put food on the table continue to get poorer each passing day. Lilian Aber, the woman member of parliament for Kitugum, says that such corrupt officials should not be recycled once they are cited in corruption cases, as is the case in her home district. Kau who was, uh, you know, interdicted in Kitugum, this was someone who was working somewhere else and had like two cases from two different districts. So then you recycle the same person and bring that person to another district. This is not right. As much as corruption cases on PDM have come up, questions remain on whether these officials are ever forced to refund this money. And while others have walked away scot-free, the technical advisor of the PDM, Irene Mwanguzi, says they have tried to tighten before the money is, is, is utilized. So they need to return the money to the consolidated fund. That was the excuse they gave. But of course the motive was to misappropriate the money. And so they divided it up. They, they put it to different use and went to persons at the district level. Mwanguzi tells me that the government... Everybody who is accessing the, the money is, is recorded and uh, is captured right from the beneficiaries up to the monitoring system through the districts, the, the PDCs, parish development committees, up to the, gov the, the highest level government. So that system is going to help us to monitor where the money is going, to whom, and uh, how is it being utilized, how is it going, being paid back. Even though the system has been changed, some believe that as long as PDM is still intertwined with politics, the interference will not permit it to reap the intended results. To make matters worse on the PDM parish committees, there is representation for NRM. So that means that even the beneficiaries are likely to be identified without political bias. Why do you need a political party in a government program? The right? problem is in these technical offices. There are people who do dirty things. They hide behind the papers. Question is, is PDM still viable for poverty alleviation? I think it's too early to tell because uh, the, the parish development model aims at bringing the 38% population outside the money economy into a taxable money formal economy. That takes about three to five years to be realized in the short term. Systems are designed by people. These very people learn ways on how to beat these very systems. Where does this leave the taxpayers' money? Where does this leave government objectives? And most importantly, the people wallowing in poverty. Kanarim Gume, NBS, live at 9. All right, you know your opinion matters to us. It is that time in the bulletin where we get to ask your opinion on an interesting topic. Tonight we posted on both Facebook and Twitter and asked you to share with us the performance of the parish development model in your area. We're using the hashtag NBS Live at 9. 
on Twitter, Justine Toluto says, without recruiting agriculture extension workers to train farmers on PDM, I am seeing nothing coming out of it in the country. In Kitgum, people have forgotten about it. Bernard Mwanguzi on Twitter says, as Christians wait for the coming of Jesus Christ, people this way are waiting for the parish development model. Still on Twitter, Francis says, for God in my country, I haven't seen, I have, I have not seen yet. Maybe in the next financial year, I am waiting. Edima Ronald on Facebook says, it has never started in Yumbe district, despite the massive sensitization and people had lost morale as far as the project is concerned. These are all various comments coming in through our various social media platforms. Remember, we continue to use the hashtag NBS Updates and NBS Live at 9 on Facebook and Twitter as we stream live on air and online. Looking at more stories making headlines, the Uganda Human Rights Commission is stuck with a backlog of over 1,700 compensation complaints in 12 regions countrywide, which date as far back as 2004. According to the Director, Complaints, Investigations and Legal Services, Aida Nachiganda, the backlog and delays are attributed to variations that happen within the Commission's leadership and the shift of mandate to pay the complaints from the Auditor General to responsible parties. Compensation complainants at the Uganda Human Rights Commission, which debt as far back as 2004, have seen cases accumulate to 1,700. Six million for violation of his right to freedom. According to the Commission's Director of Complaints and Investigations, the backlog is due to many factors, including the Commission's... Convening these tribunal hearings, um, as you've seen, the, the tribunals are conducted by members of the Commission, and so where we have not been fully constituted, which has been quite a number of times, uh, where we've not met the constitutional quorum, which is the chairperson. Uh, all the compensation for their human rights, four were successful, two were not successful due to... Provide further proof uh, before we award any money or award and make any orders in favor of this complainant, that even first of all, he has authorized the wife. According to UHRC, the commission is set to hear over 50 complaints countrywide within three weeks and have 22 decisions fully ruled. You may realize that for every quarter, the office of the attorney general makes payments of compensation, which was not the case before. Uh, the commission continues to engage um, especially the Office of the Attorney General. The Commission further confesses to their cognizance of the current human rights violations, but proclaim that priority will be on complaints that have lasted for long. And when we come now to cause listing, we have to prioritize the older matters because there are newer matters, like you've rightly noted, that you've seen newer, newer cases coming up of alleged human rights violations. Linda Ndumwami, Adam Nwamanya, NBS, Live at 9. Most government-aided schools, especially in Toro, registered a low turn-up of learners on day one. The low turn-up, according to school heads, was as a result of parent inability to clear half school fees. A few schools that had high registration had to forego demands for school clearance. Details follow in this report. The start of school term in Toro district was on a low note. In a number of schools that NBS television visited, the number of learners had reported was extremely low. For instance, at St. Peter's College, Tororo, that expects over 700 students. What would they expect? Out of those that had already reported, less than 50 managed to clear required fees to zero balance. But as a management, what we did was to come up with a, a commitment form in duplicate. In that commitment form, we uh, allow the parent to come and make his commitment of the payment of the percentage. Then the parent gives a period within which he will be able to clear the balance. Manjasi High School was our next stopover. Here the difference was the same. Out of the expected 500 learners, less than 50 had so far reported. Parents have expressed fear of bringing children when they don't have full fees. We have a number of new parents 
but we are encouraging these parents to bring the children even with the part payment of school fees. The two situations at Toro College and Manjasi High are however the opposite of Toro Girls School. Here, the school that expected over 1,300 students from the four classes of S2, S3, S4 and 6 had over 900 students already back and in class. The school head teacher Beatrice Aquare attributes the turn up to their close relationship with the parents. Every class teacher has a WhatsApp group of his class where they, even in holidays they keep on engaging with the students and the parents. The teachers give them a number to work out during holidays, essays to write during holidays on those WhatsApp groups. So in, those, in the, such forum, they, there has been continuity of, of, of communication. Regarding clearance of fees, much as the schools has over 70% of their total students already back, majority of these learners are yet to clear their fees. As parents were seen at school lining up to plead with the administration to allow their children in as they look for the money. So we listen. If a parent interfaces with us, we give them that opportunity to pay the 30 percent and then within the spell of three weeks they can top up. Away from secondary schools, most of the government aided primary schools in the district registered a low turn up. For instance at Mirikit Primary School out of the 900 pupils only 75 was in attendance. This low turn up of learners is said to be the reason why the district has continued to register poor results in national exams. That child that has stayed home for a week or two weeks is already a disorganized child. By the time that child reaches school, the other ones are already moving on. You finish copying these notes, the others are in a different... So this child will keep on recovering. And by the time the, the he or she recovers, it is already late. In the recent released PLE results, Toro had over 4,200 pupils registering between Division 4 and you, Richard Olweng, Deb Ocheng, NBS, live at 9. Buseruka sub-county in Hoima district is facing acute water shortage after the 700 million DRDIP water project broke down two months after it was commissioned. The project now needs 500 million shillings to be repaired. Money local leaders are questioning, hence faulting the manner in which the contract was awarded. The contractors have been described as incompetent. Villages of Chongambe, Karanuang, Kasanyiriato, and Nyakabingo all lie in Hoima's semi arid belt and have been hit by a water crisis. The scorching temperatures in these villages have dried up the vegetation, and several water points that locals would rely on have all dried out. To get water, one needs to walk more than 17 miles to River Hoimo to access clean water. For those who can't, 1,000 shillings per jerrican is the price of getting clean water. We don't have safe water for drinking. People have to move like three kilometers going to fetch Hoimo water, which is also not safe for drinking. And uh, you find in a family, someone can use like uh, three to four jerrycans in a day. You have to move all that distance looking for that water. To solve such challenges, the government has set up a 700 million Chongambe water project with funding from DRDIP. The project was meant to pump water to more than four villages in this same year. The project had broken down. According to locals, the project wasn't productive to them since the water it produced was too salty and not good for domestic use. Water, uh, mini pipe to water, it is so salty and the locals cannot use it. In most cases they use them for like laying bricks which is not even so benefiting. To revive the project, the contractor is asking for 500 million shillings, which the local leaders are disputing. Pipe waters, the 700 million, uh, which doesn't even uh, work. And then when you add another 500 million, to me, I think uh, uh, it's like they are now beginning another new project. It's like uh, they are wasting that money just. So realizing the defects, the same contractor is the one who is going to work. It is, it is the one who is going to work on the same on those defects. So the the. The request for money has been done by the same contractor. 
that that is what, what is puzzling me according to the office of the resident district commissioner the contractor needs the money to repair the few diffs already installed useless those solar panels will be useless when they extend power because those solar powers it, it appears are not going to be able to use to, to to pump the water from the ground and supply to those villages so that is a waste of resource already olivia nakalembe Cuthbert Chigozi, NBS, live at nine. The family of the late Muhaja Costa, the 75-year-old who was allegedly abducted from his garden in Kasese and later found dead, are demanding for an explanation. This is where the late Mohonja Costa used to reside before he was allegedly abducted and driven away in a drone by unknown people. Much as these documents indicate that to his cotton garden, Tindiabwa Ezra, the son of the late, says upon learning of the abduction of his father, he quickly rushed to Wera Police Division, where police confirmed that he was taken by security personnel. He got a call from Katrul, where Mzei carries his peasant family. They didn't know. I tried to follow up the police, reveal what type of force it was now the family is demanding for clear explanation from government on how Mohonja Costa was abducted and suddenly died so we request the government to handle all of those issues and tell us exactly what made them to pick Mohonja Costa from his area to where he was taken government should explain to why such a kind of arrests This is in addition to refining expenses incurred during the search for their member. Since it has been proved that his government officials that arrested him, government should make ways of how his body is exhumed at their own workspace, brought back to his home for a decent burial. So we ask the government and all stake old bodies to also put a hand to see that our brother's body is brought here. Also look into the matter of how much we have spent looking for Muzei since he was arrested because they didn't reveal where they took him. That's why all that money to amounting to uh, total amounting to over six million. Nama Jairin, Fahad Masereka, NBS, live at nine. The Ministry of Health has launched the National Community Health Strategy as part of efforts to improve community health systems through the provision of basic health services. Anchored in various national planning frameworks, the strategy focuses on promoting preventative measures. Hospital admissions are due to preventable diseases like malaria and hygiene-related illnesses, among others. When this is accompanied by the poor health-seeking habits of many Ugandans, the disease burden rates... ...which are related to an hygienic situation that actually exists in our communities. The point is, and that has been our strategy, that we have been telling our people, no, 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 let's go and find the diseases where they come from so that we reduce them from coming to the hospitals. In response to this challenge, 2026, the strategy is anchored in the parish development model, the third national health policy, and other national planning frameworks. This was launched in Kampa Division, a Kampala suburb that is home to a significant portion of urban dwellers. We need to focus on health promotion. We need to focus on disease prevention. So in the same way, all our strategies, all our plans have been designed in that context. Our this strategy is going to provide directions to us, even to the communities, but also gives confidence to the community health workers being paid, and they do the door-to-door -door care. They close the gap between the health facilities and the community. Uganda's community health approach is anchored on the primary health care concept and seeks to ensure equitable access to health care for all. 
Community health remains an essential piece in primary health care, and that is the reason as to why the Ministry of Health has launched a national strategy to help in the prevention of diseases. Henry Mugeni, NBS Live at Nine. Work, work, work. Work's over. Busy Biden, get down to snack business. In the Opportunity Bank family today to discover the simplicity of mobile banking. Enjoy our 24-7 instant 